To prepare to cut and construct the tote bag, first find the tote bag patterns. Included in the kit are three pages of 11 by 17 paper with pattern pieces printed on them. The tote bag lining part A, tote bag lining part B, and the inner pocket. The pattern pieces need to be cut out. Using the paper scissors, carefully cut along the outer edge of each piece. Cut as straight and accurately as possible. The tote bag lining was printed on two sheets of paper. Cut part A out completely. On part B, leave the extra paper along the attach part A here line. Line up the attach part A line with the attach part B line. The top line should just cover the bottom line. Use the red notches to help line things up. Be sure that it is aligned from side to side as well as top to bottom. Peel off the back of the small white adhesive label pieces and place over the join. Place one about one inch from each side as well as one in the middle. Next, use the paper scissors to cut out the notches marked with red triangles along the edges of each piece. Cut a small triangle centered over the red line. This will help remind you to mark it when you lay out your patterns as well as be visible from the back side if the pattern needs to be flipped. Do this for each red notch along the edge of each pattern. The internal markings for the placement of the inner pocket are designated by red dots and red triangles pointed towards the corners. Use the tip of the pencil to gently poke a hole in the center of each dot or corner. If you prefer, the tip of the seam ripper can be used to start the hole, but the hole may need to be enlarged with the tip of the pencil afterwards. Be sure that the hole is just large enough to mark through with the pencil. The red dots marking the tips of the darts should also be poked out. This allows the darts to be marked and also be visible from the other side of the pattern when flipped. The notches marking the bottom of the darts should also be cut out. There is one red triangle missing. A notch needs to be cut on the last line of the top dart too. Cut the notches marking the fold lines as well. Each pattern piece has information printed on it. The name of the pattern piece is listed and underneath the project the pattern piece belongs to followed by the class it is for. There is a note to attach the piece to part B before cutting. The pattern piece lists how many of this piece to cut and there is a note that no seam allowance is included. This means the pattern does not have the seam allowance. So after tracing, the seam allowance must be added before cutting. The amount that should be added is listed on each edge. Plus one means to add one inch of seam allowance along that edge. The line with arrows at both ends is a grain line. This is important to help you line up the pattern with the grain of the fabric so that the project looks its best. There are two grain lines on this piece. Depending on the pattern of your fabric, you may choose to use one over the other. There are internal markings for the placement of the inner pocket, as well as dashed lines that mark where the bag will fold when constructed. There is similar information on the inner pocket pattern. The name, project name, and class. Note this piece is cut one on the fold and does not have seam allowance added. Some edges are plus one inch, but the top edge is plus zero, as the seam allowance has been included when the casing was patterned, so no seam allowance will be added along the top edge. The fold lines to create the casing are printed, as well as a guideline for where the casing will end. The triangles mark where the darts will be folded and sewn. The grain line has two bent ends to signify that the fabric will be cut along the fold. The pattern will be lined up along the grain line using this line, traced, 
then flipped on the fold line and traced along the other side to complete the pocket. Decide which pieces are going to be cut out of which fabrics. Write the color or type of the fabric on each pattern piece. Do the same for the twill flat lining. This will help you cut the right pieces out of the right fabric. Before you begin to cut, there are some characteristics of fabric to be aware of. It is important to locate the right and wrong side of the fabric. Some fabric is the same or very similar on both sides, such as the solid green. Choose a side to be the back or wrong side. When the stitch lines are added, this will designate this as the wrong side and the clean side or side with no writing, the right side of the fabric. The right side of the fabric will be visible when the bag is finished. Other fabrics like this print are very different on each side. The print is more vivid on the right side, while it is almost white on the wrong side of the fabric. Before you begin cutting, be sure to look closely and decide which sides of the fabric will be the right side for your project. Cotton fabrics like these also have a grain. The grain runs parallel to the selvage edge of the fabric. The selvage edge is the fixed edge made when the fabric is woven. This runs up each side of the full width of the fabric. Some, like this fabric, have a fuzzy edge, but even if you pull on that edge, it will not fray. Others, like the green, have a clean selvage edge. But just like the fuzzy selvage edge, this edge will not fray when you pull, unlike the cut edge. Use the iron to press any wrinkles or creases from your fabric before beginning to lay out and cut. 